Welcome back. We got disconnected. We're sorry about that. We're just going to pick off, pick up where we left off. Uh, the purpose of this session today is to really give you information. We know that there's a lot of anxiety out there. Uh, we know that there's, this is new territory for all of America. And what we want to do is kind of re reassure you of what we're doing here in Joint Base Charleston. Uh, we have a team that's been working around the clock to uh, provide information and updates. Uh, some of them are sitting behind me and we're here to answer your questions. Uh, we want to first start by letting you know that the reason and purpose that the base is still open and at normal operations is because we have DOD priorities and those priorities are to protect people, to maintain readiness, and also to support any other government agency. In order to do that, some of the key functions on the base will still remain operational. And one of those key things is our CDC, our Child Care Development Center. We want to make sure that you all know that we are 100% uh, focused on ensuring that that operation uh, takes place. Uh, so what we want to do is kick off now with an update. So we'll have our uh, public health officer, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Pete Baldwin, if you would give us an update of where we are from a public health standpoint. Thank you, sir. Good evening, uh, Joint Base Charleston. So we just want to give you a little bit of an update on the situation here in South Carolina, in the Charleston area, and, and specific to Joint Base Charleston. Currently in the state of South Carolina, as reported by DHEC, uh, the Department of Health and Environmental Control for the state, there are 33 uh, cases of COVID-19 statewide. Most of them are occurring well north of Joint Base Charleston. There has been one case in Charleston County. There are zero cases in Dorchester County, and there are zero cases reported in Berkeley County. For the Joint Base, we have no confirmed cases uh, in our population at all. What we want to encourage all of you to do is wash your hands regularly. This is consistent with all of the guidance that we've been receiving from the state of South Carolina, as well as the CDC. Additionally, if you're, sti if you're sick, stay home, especially if you're sick with fever, dry cough, or shortness of breath. We also want to make sure that uh, you are limiting access and, and limiting attendance at public functions especially public functions of more than 50 people. Lastly, make sure that, that you are regularly sanitizing at home and disposing of anything that you've coughed or sneezed onto or cleaning those things regularly. That's, uh, that's the latest information that we have from a medical standpoint here. Thank you, Pete. So what we want to do now is to take your questions. So we'll start taking those questions uh, now. Uh, additionally, we have our first question, we'll bring it up, and while we're formulating that question, many of you all may have just heard the President's address uh, that came out with some new information. We are digesting that information, and we're going to ensure that we are following that guidance as well. So let's get our first question going. Jeremy is asking if we can make our fitness facilities available for our active duty members. So we've decided not to have the fitness center open because of the flex day. It's a high traffic area and keeping it sanitized was a problem. Uh, that is a measure that was done to ensure the health and safety and the wellness of all people across Joint Base Charleston. Recommendations that we got from our Hague headquarters as well. So those are reasons why the fitness center is closed and it will be closed also for our active duty members. But we are encouraging you to work out outside where available. Uh, to make sure that you can do that or if you have some space inside your own home uh, that's what we would ask you all to work out thank you our next question sir ebony is asking if our uta weekend scheduled for this weekend is still on uh, great question and yes it is uh, yet at a reduced manning level currently uh, only those members that need either continue currently only those members that will either need to get training for deployment uh, and or maintain readiness levels uh, are we asking to come in to include our medical health services please get in contact with your unit leadership they will be able to let you know if you uh, are coming in or a liberal reschedule but we will be having UTA this weekend at a reduced manning. thank you next question sir Chris is asking if the education center will remain open for WAPS testing do we have our education folks here? Tony? Yes, sir. My name is Tony Chapman with the Force Support Squadron. At this time, we're looking to stay open for WAPS testing. That may change. What we're going to ask is you to check out at Joint Base Charleston's website and their Facebook and all the social media for the latest updates. But at this time, we're planning to keep WAPS testing operational, sir. All right, thank you. <clears throat> sir, Juan's asked the question about our dining facility and whether we plan on keeping it open and how what our plan is to feed our airmen in the dorms. 
Okay, so right now we're planning to keep the dining facility open. Uh, you may see us in the next couple of days go to a um, takeout only option. Uh, we're working through some of the details right now to ensure that we have some of the, the supplies to be able to make that happen. Uh, that's on the air base side. On the um, Navy Weapon Station side for our galley, we have students. Uh, we don't have any plans to change that operation as of yet. Uh, but what we're trying to do is make sure in these high traffic areas uh, that we are going to change the way we're doing normal business. Uh, and one way to do that is for takeout only. So you will be seeing more information as we uh, solidify those procedures coming up soon. Thanks for, for that question. Sir, next question is from Diane, who's asking about the commissaries, whether they will have reduced hours or if they will stick with their standard, uh, their normal hours. As of right now, so probably about an hour ago, we just had all of the team on. We had our crisis action team that came in. Uh, commissary right now, as far as information that we just received, will maintain regular um, operating hours, uh, not looking to reduce. As we know, as we're gonna ask more members to stay at home, it's gonna be vital uh, that they're gonna have something to eat while they're home. So that's the reason why the commissary is gonna maintain their hours. And this is information as of an hour ago. Just so you all know, a lot of changes have been taking place, uh, especially post the president's announcement. So that's the latest information I have as of right now. But great question. Sir, our next question is from Amanda who's asking if we will keep our bowling center open and available. So our bowling center, we're gonna to let to close. As we begin, areas that we think high traffic where germs could take place, we're going and using the same balls, uh, but we're gonna to try to keep the uh, food facility inside, they're open for takeout only. So we're gonna to look to close our bowling alleys, but in some ways try to keep the food options available from those operations. Thank you for that question. Sir, the next question is from Edward, who uh, is asking about, with the President's announcement, uh, to reduce gatherings of 10 or more, what our thoughts are and what we're doing to adjust uh, our operations here on the Joint Base. So we're leaving that up to each one of the missions owners. I don't know if they have an update. We just got that information, you know, that just came in. We're trying to digest that to see what that's going to mean for us. Uh, but some of that is knowing that as DOD still has those priorities of maintaining readiness, uh, and also to assist other government agencies, it may require the military operation to keep moving and to do in certain functions. Uh, so we're looking at what that means with the new president's guidance. We also have not received any guidance from our higher headquarters as well. Uh, so we're gonna be waiting for that information to come down and we will adjust as that information comes out. And I don't know if any other, other partners have any other answers to that. I would just e echo what Colonel Adams said as we execute the flying schedule tomorrow sometimes gatherings in, in excess of 10 people are going to be required to launch aircraft and, and do what, what the normal schedule requires, but we are digesting and may adjust as well. Uh, no, thank you. Sir, our next question is regarding our MWR programs and what our plans are for those. So our plans are to reduce those. Again, um, we're looking at this as a matter of what do we need to have open? Say for example, if we had a trip plan that was just for fun, that was gonna bring 30, 50 people together, then we're gonna cancel that or postpone that trip. Now, there's no need to do that in this type of environment that we're in right now. Um, we also have some individuals who may have weddings that are going on, and we're gonna to try to work with them because we understand how important uh, those activities are and those events are. Uh, so we wanna to try to lead with compassion, but also putting safety first. So that's gonna be our approach as we handle each one of these things is, uh, looking at it from a standpoint, if, if I was getting married or somebody else was getting married, how would we handle those situations? But yeah. if it's just some regular event that we believe we can do later on, then we're gonna postpone those events until later. But thank you for that question. Sir, we're getting several questions about the, the plans for continued operations for MPTU and NNPTC. So right now, as talking to those mission partners, uh, we posted a slide that has that they're gonna be at normal operations. Uh, those leaders have not messaged anything um, other than that. So right now, normal operations. If there is a change from those leaders, uh, then we're gonna post that. You should see a, a tag on our a Facebook page that has the conditions of each one of our units. As those units change, we will update that uh, post out there on Facebook. We will post that to our base webpage as well, and we will make sure that leadership messages that as well. Uh, but again, we have to remember that part of the DOD's priority is to stay ready. Uh, we want to make sure that those operations are ready. So producing nuclear sailors 
for our nation's defense is very important. And I don't know if we're in a position now that we're saying that we want to reduce that production. But great question, and we'll continue to message anything that comes out from those commanders. That's, I don't own that mission, so I'm just giving you the information uh, that they told me. And if that changes, we'll make sure we put that out. Thank you. Sir, we've had a couple other questions regarding uh, other education center services that are offered, uh, such as CLEPS testing and voluntary education services. So, uh, Tony, I don't know if you know about CLEPS, if you can answer that. So generally speaking, we're going to use the same guidelines that Colonel Adams already talked about. We're going to try and reduce mass gathering. So if there's a small number of people that require club testing, that may go forward. Um, again, I'm going to ask you to double check the websites for their most current updated information. Uh, volunteer education or off duty education is going to go online. So those schools that we partner with are going to be offering that platform for their students still. All right. Thank you, Tony. Sir, we have a question from Amara who's asking about the status of our libraries. Our libraries will soon close. So we're gonna look at closing those libraries. Uh, we believe as far as what the other uh, libraries are doing in the community, they're closing as well. And uh, we wanna make sure we match that. But more importantly, as we talk about cleanliness, we wanna make sure that all, any of those high traffic areas that we have that we're closing, opportunities to touch the same products or books or computer screens, uh, we just wanna minimize that risk. So you will be see us coming out assume with the closure of the libraries and we will have a list out we've already worked on a stoplight chart similar to this uh, we're going to post that out there so you all are able to see that but we're working hard to try to ensure that we're going to message information to you that's easily digestible so you already know again tuning into our facebook tuning into our base web page and then making sure you're talking to your leadership will be great ways to get information Sir, we've had a few questions about uh, our immediate posture for the medical services on the base. So right now, medical services will stay as normal as possible. Um, we're not looking to reduce any of that capacity. Uh, and I want you all to just think through this. As a commander that I am, I want to keep all the services open to ensure that the base can continue to operate. But I, I also have people with families, and they're, and they're going to help me try to dictate some of the things that they do. Right now, all of our people are coming in, uh, so that means that we're gonna continue to stay open. Um, if we get some issues that we need to reduce, it won't be because we don't wanna support the mission. It may be because we have family members that may have some issues that they're dealing with. So our goal is to keep everything open from an installation perspective that we think is mission uh, critical, that my, the mission partners need to support their operations. And making sure that and during this time, I don't think medical is one of those areas that we would wanna close. So we had a couple questions about our um, personnel posturing for the installation and what that looks like moving forward. More personnel posture. Well, uh, specifically, if we were going to essential personnel only. Okay, so, and, and I will let each one of the, the mission commanders kind of talk about their position for their personnel. Okay, man, starting with the 437th airlift wing, we are flying a normal local schedule tomorrow, so that drives basically normal manning for, for the maintenance group for sure. Mm -hmm. It's up to individual squadron commanders to bring in who they believe is, is necessary to execute our mission for tomorrow and we'll adjust each day as required. And it's gonna be the same for the, the Navy. Each mission partner is gonna have their own uh, unique set of demands on, on their personnel and what mission essential looks like. So that's, that's gonna be up to the individual commander to set that. For the Reserve 315th Airlift Wing, we are currently looking at our telework posture. Uh, we have all the organizations and units coming through that uh, are identifying those individuals that uh, may be willing to do telework. We will get that out to you shortly. Additionally, we have a policy letter that should be uh, hitting your desk tonight uh, via email. And as far as UTAs, again, we will continue to man the UTAs at a reduced posture. Uh, and we, too, will be flying and maintaining a, a normal line at this time. So just Thank you. Great question. Sorry. Just a reminder that we haven't used the word mission, mission essential because that has a lot of different meanings legally. What we're saying now is for most of the units is reduced manning. So uh, we've shied away from using that because that we use that terminology when we're talking about hurricanes. This uh, response to the virus is something totally different. So now we're trying to use reduced manning as a term to describe what, how we're posturing. Sir, I know you addressed this early on in the discussion, but I think some folks might have joined us late, but there's still quite a few questions come in about our CDC posturing and our youth programs. 
or whether they will remain, and if so, why, why we made the decision to continue keeping them open. Okay, so for our CDC, any of the, the uh, programs that we have that takes care of children, right, uh, those parents need somewhere for those kids to go if we're gonna ask them to come in to do work, right? Uh, so again, we're going back to DOD priority number two of ensuring that we maintain uh, mission readiness, it's gonna require that some people are gonna have to work. Uh, and what that means is that we need to be able to provide some child care for those individuals. That's why we're staying open. Uh, our mission is different in the military than it is downtown. Uh, we have to maintain mission readiness. Uh, so those are the reasons why we're gonna keep those uh, activities open. Uh, Tony, if you wanted to talk about our other areas for child care, you can at this time. So sir, as you mentioned, we're, we're planning to keep as much open as we can. Um, we understand that there's a mission need to provide child care on Joint Base Charleston, both the Air Base side and the weapons station side. You'll like you'll also see school age care is still gonna be provided. Um, it will be in full day care while the schools are out. The only thing that we may see an impact to would be the recreational nature of our youth programs. That may see a decrease. Right now we're not planning for it, but if it comes up, that would be the first area that we may see it. All right, thank you. Thanks. Sir, we've had a couple questions from folks asking what the plans are for short stay and for our golf courses. So hi, Tony Chapman from the Force Support Squadron again. Um, right now we're looking as we move into a, a, another posture to make sure that we're taking care of the safety and health of our people here on Joint Base Charleston, that we would look to keep those operations going right now. That may change in the future. And again, we're gonna recommend that you go back out to the Facebook page, social media, and the Joint Base Charleston website to get the most current information on the status of closures. So, thank you. So the next question is regarding our privatized housing and how the, our current postures and closures uh, might, might affect our privatized housing services. So right now we have our both of our Balfour Bay and also Hunt Housing uh, here. They're joined here with us for specific questions you have. And what we do know is they're postured right now uh, to go to emergency work orders only, that we would not be answering routine work orders. And I know a number of you are going to wonder what does routine mean. Uh, one example we talked about in this room before we started was say a light bulb would be something that probably would be routine. Uh, we know it's going to have to be a balance, right? If we're going to ask people to be in their homes more often, uh, and there may be some functions that are required in the home, we're going to have to see how we balance that. But if you can uh, look at it from the other side of a, a maintenance person going in contact to a house, they're not going to know if those, anybody's infected in that house. Uh, and especially the people don't know. Now the maintenance person goes to the next house. Uh, so that's the kind of thing that we're trying to look through, how we're gonna be able to manage that. Because uh, at, at the, uh, the bottom line is we're trying to keep Joint Base Charleston safe and protect you from any kind of issue. So that's the reason why we wanted to make sure it was emergency work orders only. Thank you. Sir, I think we have time for two more questions. The next question is this. With our current contingency work that we're facing with COVID-19, obviously it had has had significant impact um, to, to the joint base. How long do we expect for this uh, situa situation to persist? Well, very good question. Now, when the president got this question, he used uh, the timeline of July and August as a timeline that came from the president, you know, maybe an hour or two ago. Again, we're gonna continue to revalidate re what that means here on Joint Base Charleston, uh, not knowing where we are uh, in the cycle of the virus condition, um, but right now, those are the words that we just heard from the president, so I'll, I'll use that uh, as the timeline that we have right now. This may be one of our last questions here, sir, but one of the questions that we're having is, are we limiting, limiting base access at this point in time? We are not limiting base access at this time. Again, uh, the base is a platform that we launch missions each and every day, uh, and we need to make sure that the base is functioning and operational. Uh, I haven't seen a reason now to limit base access. But again, things may change. In this current posture that we're in right now, uh, I, have, I do not see that as something that we uh, need to do. So I think this may be our last question here, sir. Um, but we had a, we've had a couple questions about what we should do with individuals who may be separating or retiring uh, in the short term. Um, I don't know um, if we have received all the guidance on that. I think um, for retirement earlier came up that if you are planning to retire before May 11th, then you can proceed to retire. After May 11th, those individuals may be on a hold, and we're waiting for a clarification on that guidance right now. Um, we put out language, and we can talk to your leadership about um, travel and TDYs and things. 
Uh, those are the things that I will ask you to go back and talk back to uh, your chain of command to get those answers. Uh, we will continue to, uh, as a uh, force support squadron to update you on those policies. Uh, but those policies have been changing. So I ask you to make sure you go back to your chain of command and get that answer. All right, now, so that's all the time we're going to take right now for questions. We're going to continue to have a, a post out there. Uh, we will uh, allow you all to continue to ask those questions, and we'll go in there and give you uh, verbal responses to that. Uh, but today, well, what we want to do is just to reassure you that the leaders here from each one of the three wings and our Navy partners are here to support uh, your needs. Uh, the 628th Air Base Wing will remain at normal operations until we make a determination of when we can reduce those if required. My job here at the Installation Commander is to make sure that I'm supporting these gentlemen on, on my left and my right. Uh, they have a mission to execute, same as the individuals on the Navy Weapon Station, and my job is to ensure that those individuals uh, are meeting their mission demands that they have. Uh, if that changes, then we will change our posture in the 628th Air Base Wing. Um, but what I want you to do is just uh, be calm and be patient on uh, wh what's going on. Um, I know there may be a lot of anxiety, a lot of fears, because we are not operating in any kind of normal uh, environment at, at all. Uh, and that may sometimes drive fear. I would ask that you all uh, talk to your family members and make sure that they understand where we are, that this leadership team that you see here, see here in front of you is working day in and day out to make sure that we keep you safe uh, and to make sure we're going to continue to support the priorities of DOD. Uh, one question that we just had earlier was about our air show. We've officially canceled the air show. Uh, that information has been sent out in a public release statement, uh, and we've also uh, posted that on all of our kind of outlets. So just so you all know, the air show is officially uh, canceled, not postponed, but canceled. And to wrap up, we just want to say thank you. Thank you all for giving us those questions. Uh, we'll look for another time that we kind of come to you again with a virtual town hall when that may be appropriate. And again, we're gonna finally ask you to stay in close contact with your leadership, uh, that you continue to watch our Facebook pages and you also go and watch us on our, um, on our base webpage. Those are gonna be the outlets that you're gonna get your best information. Uh, gentlemen, you all have any final comments? Uh, yes, real quick, I just ask that we continue to be strong across our uh, joint base family, uh, continue to take care of each other during this tough time our country's had. Okay. Thank you very much, T.A. Just remember, practice good, good hygiene, and have a wonderful night. All right. Thank you all for your time. We'll be in touch with you all soon.